Hello, my name is Angie Beckett and I'm a COG UK contributor and scientist working at the University of Portsmouth. I'm delighted to welcome you to our latest Women in COG event today. Today we're joined by Dr. Mariana Viegas. Mariana is a biochemist and has a PhD from the Faculty of Exact Sciences from the Universidad Nacional de la Plata, where she has been a professor of clinical virology since 2006. She has been working on viral evolution studies of respiratory viruses in pediatric patients at the Virology Laboratory of the Ricardo Gutierrez Children's Hospital in Buenos Aires in Argentina, where she is currently an independent Conicet researcher. She has collaborated as an external advisor to the World Health Organization since 2019 with the WHO Global Respiratory Syncytial Virus Surveillance Programme. In 2013, she ventured into next generation sequencing technologies to begin the genomic approach in her work. Since 2015, her team developed and implemented genomic surveillance of RSV in pediatrics at their hospital. Then they expanded their experience into the genomic studies of other respiratory viruses and their new approaches such as metagenomics. Due to her previous experience, she was the perfect person to brainstorm, create, and coordinate the Argentine Consortium for SARS-CoV-2 Genomics, also known as the PAIS Project. And I'm sure she'll be telling us about her role in the Argentine Consortium in today's discussion. So today, Mariana will be in conversation with Dr. Laia Delgado Cayaco. Laia manages internal and external communications for COG UK and COG Train. Before joining the consortium, she was a Schumann trainee in the Scientific Foresight Unit at the European Parliament. She has a PhD in physics from King's College London and a background in molecular biophysics and chemistry. I, for one, am really looking forward to this conversation. But before we start, just a quick note on the housekeeping. We will be recording the, ses the session, which will later go on to our COG UK website and YouTube channel. I would ask you to please stay on mute with your camera off. The session will last until 2 p.m. There will be an opportunity for questions at the end of the discussion, so please submit your questions into the Q&A box as we go. I'm pleased to now hand this over to Laia. Thank you, Laia. Thank you, Angie, and welcome, Mariana. Thank you for accepting our invitation. And let's start from the beginning. How did you become interested in science? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to participate in this inspiring series of Women in Code. I feel very honored to have been selected among so many interesting women in the world. So I, I, I expect or I hope that my experience will serve to inspire new women <laughs> in this career. So, well, uh, genetically speaking, I would say that it was in my DNA. <laughs> I've always been a, a, an analytical person. And my father, uh, at the beginning of his career as an hydraulic engineer, nothing, nothing, nothing uh, related to my topic, but he was fond of research as well. So I think it was in my blood. But um, and related to, to to the topic of my 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 scientific career, in my in the third year of my secondary school, I had a biology by my uh, biology teacher that taught me the genetic Mendel's laws. And I got impressed with that topic and I, I knew that I wanted to study genetics. So I went to study biochemistry at La Plata University, as Angela told you. And uh, during my, I, I studied that career because it was the closest approach to genetics at La Plata University. And uh, uh, during my career, I had an encounter with the viruses in the microbiology course. Uh, so I then I could better orient myself what I really wanted to do, that is genetics in virology. That is my story <laughs> about how I started. Yeah, I was also inspired by my chemistry teacher to study chemistry. Oh, yeah. Very <laughs> good, awful. Now you're working as a scientist and you're leading a mm -hmm. team. You are also the coordinator, as we've mentioned, of the PAIS project, which is the COVID-19 Genomic Consortium in Argentina. And regarding mm -hmm. your personal life, you have on your Twitter biography that you are a mother of two teenagers. Yeah. How do you mm -hmm. manage the, the balance between all the activities in your work and also your personal life? And has it been easy to juggle all responsibilities? Yes. Uh, you know what? I always try to do my best. <laughs> but if I have to make a definition, I would say that my family is my reason of happiness. And 
my passion for virology is my engine of life. Um, I think that my family is very important, and I would say that uh, during the pandemic, but for my family support, I wouldn't have been able to do what I did. And related my personal life, I would say that during the worst moment of the pandemic, I had to put aside many uh, personal activities, but but I'm trying to resume them now. <laughs> but I think that in, at this point, it's it's very important to bear in mind that we are no heroines. Uh, we have days and days, and sometimes we are tired, and we want to we want to leave everything. So, showing what that we are heroines or tireless uh, may uh, makes hesitate future human, uh, future women scientists to 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 hesitate to start this career because they may think that they won't be able to make it, and it's not true. Uh, women with the desire, the energy, and the perseverance can do everything. Yeah, exactly. And thank you for answering this question because it's a tricky question because it's something yeah. you don't ask to a man, you don't ask how they mm -hmm. juggle work and personal. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to hear from the experience of someone who has made yes. it. So we can yes, learn. we are human beings. We are human beings. We are no heroines. We have we are we are real persons. <laughs> So you've had a very successful career so far. Mm -hmm. What do you think has been your proudest achievement? Well, clearly the PICE project has uh, is the culmination of everything that I did little by little during my 20 years career. And uh, I think that um, I, I think that I, I, I would say something that is not politically correct that that somehow the the things happen because of something. Uh, I I um and I, I was it. I was in the correct place uh, and uh, at the at at the, at, the, at the perfect time because at, at the level of my career that allowed me to brainstorm this idea, uh, performing genomic surveillance of respiratory viruses, and uh, and with a teamwork exceptional that joined this project from day zero. So. I think that everything uh, led to the success of this project. Yeah, it at COC we at COC UK we ran a membership survey during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and we found that sixty percent of female COC UK members say that the pandemic had positively impacted their career mm -hmm. because it had provided more funding and opened the door for mm -hmm. collaborations. I assume that this is this has also been the case for you. That despite yes. all the things that a pandemic entails, yeah, it has, been, it has propelled your career. Yes, yes, totally agree. As I told you before, somehow the, the, the pandemic allowed me to build a network that I always dream of to build it with this scope. And, uh, and but well, the, it's that is weird to say yeah. that the pandemic allowed me to have this successful uh, career. But well, it's 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 happened uh, with many women. And uh, I think that also uh, the, 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 the pandemic uh, has also made it possible to generate collaborations with many Latin, uh, countries, like mainly Latin American countries in our, in our case, like Brazil and Bolivia. And uh, we have worked very well and we hope that it will continue in the future. And also the network that we built uh, with the PAIS project that is a multidisciplinary network, uh, has enriched ourselves because we are professionals in different areas, working together, uh, enriching ourselves and uh, exchanges uh, knowledge. So for me, uh, it has propelled my career. Yes, it's, 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 I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, for a virologist, I think that a pandemic is the opportunity of a lifetime because it's what yeah. you've know, been working for your whole life, but it's also your yeah. worst timer. Like, what you expect would never happen. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Continuing into your work during the pandemic, we have previously mentioned that you are the coordinator of the mm -hmm. uh, PAIS project. How did uh, the consortium start? So you said you, you brainstormed the ideas. How did it start? And how did it start? And what does your role as coordinator mean? Well, um, uh, I just mentioned part of the story, but in March 2020, when the pandemic was declared and uh, there were no cases of COVID-19 in Argentina, and we had no idea what was going to happen at that moment, um, with my roping, with my working group, we aim to having a sequencing protocol for SARS-CoV-2 in order to characterize any potential case that could enter our country. 
Uh, so we contacted Nick Loman from Birmingham uh, by Twitter because everything happens on Twitter. <laughs> and we asked him, uh, we asked uh, him uh, Ali quotes from the Arctic primers to sequence SARS-CoV-2 and he kindly sent us those uh, Ali quotes. So when the first cases of COVID-19 enter our country, we could uh, successfully sequence them. So that was the starting point for our group. And at the same time, the Ministry of Science of Argentina created what was called the Coronavirus Unit, where uh, they put all the, the scientific, Argentine scientific community uh, in, uh, to, to help uh, with the pandemic. So that was when I volunteered to, to participate in the surveillance, in the genomic surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 because of our experience. And at that moment, uh, um, is a researcher, uh, by the way, is a woman, <laughs> a very important uh, virology researcher in our country. She's ne her name is uh, Andrea Gamarnik. Um, she, she has a very important role in the Ministry of Science and the, in the coronavirus unit, as I told you. Uh, she encouraged me to embark in this project, to organize this project. And she gave me a premise that was that we should uh, make the surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 at a federal level. Our country is very huge. So she said we shouldn't uh, centralize the sequencing in the capital city in Buenos Aires, uh, but and we should sequence at a federal level. So what we did was to um, uh, take advantage of all the massive sequencing capacities already installed in our country in the different provinces. And I called them one by one, asking them to join. And uh, after uh, um, and of, as well, we 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 called uh, epidemiologists, bioinformaticians. I contacted many ministry of health of the different province of the country. I uh, we called uh, virologists that specialized in molecular evolution, and uh, I called uh, every laboratory that performed diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 and asked them to join, and all of them joined enthusiastically to this project. And today I can say that we are more than 100 researchers and healthcare professionals working collaboratively, coordinated uh, at a federal level and um, with the aim of perform the surveillance of SARS-CoV-2. And now we are trying to move to other uh, viruses with high impact in the public, in, in public health. So, well, I'm very proud of this project. <laughs> it was a very hard work, but I'm now I, I can see that uh, it, 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 it worked very well. And uh, well, I, you, talk, you asked me about my role. Well, my, my role at the beginning was to organize the, the consortium. Now is to coordinate it and try to ensure that all the, the laboratories has the, the laboratory's resources to work. Um, also, I, I'm the I'm I, I promote new objectives. I'm also the link with the Ministry of Science and the Ministry of Health of the country. And um, well, as you can see, is most of the time is related to management, <laughs> my work. But uh, at this position, I can see the whole picture of the surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 in Argentina and the molecular and the evolution of the virus. So I think that is what inspires me to go on. <laughs> yeah, and your story has many similarities to the way COG UK and Professor Sharon yes. started COG UK. I heard her <laughs> in, in an interview and it's very, very similar. <laughs> so. Um, you've said you've had several meetings with the um, science minister, so your role has changed. Like you were from a, um, a field that had not not public notoriety to being more public publicly exposed. Exposed. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh -huh. How did you handle this exposure? Well, it's weird. It's weird because. Uh... During the pandemic, we uh, it's weird to hear uh, people talking about a topic that you have that has dedicated your lifetime to, and it was it, it was only discussed in uh, in academic settings. So it's it's difficult to 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 understand the idea, but uh, it's important that society recognizes the importance of these fields. 
but uh, I, I, it was he, it was it was difficult to hear, for example, economists talking about uh, uh, mortality, severity, or, or effectiveness of vaccines. But uh, also anti-vaxxers, uh, fake news uh, the, with the fake news. It was very very difficult. That, but I think it's part of the human being. It's part of the human nature. And we have to live with it. Also, the social networks, the Instagram, uh, Twitter spread the fake news very quickly. But well, we had to live with it. And regarding my exposure, was well, I have to to get used to, to get used to it. And uh, and I I participated in many interviews talking about our topic, about what we were doing and uh, trying to, to tell the, the, the society what was happening during the pandemic. And well, I also, but the funniest thing I was, I would tell you a story, a, a funny story. Uh, the funniest, uh, the funniest uh, thing was that I participated in a cartoon, <laughs> in a cartoon for children. Uh, I, I have a cartoon with myself uh, uh, as a character in a, in a cartoon uh, for children talking about viruses and COVID-19 and the vaccine. So that was the funniest thing I, I, I had during the pandemic and my teenage boys are so proud of it. <laughs> so, well, that was the funny thing. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. Yes. <laughs> And uh, you've also mentioned your collaborations with Bolivia and Brazil. What do you think are the benefits of international collaboration? Well, the exchange of knowledge. The exchange of knowledge for me is the most important thing between the, the collaborations. But sometimes uh, the, the, the collaboration between different countries with different incomes, like for example, the exchange with high income countries and low income countries, it's, it, it's different because we, the low income countries, have always uh, low budgets to work. Although we have, for example, in my case, in the case of Paris Consortium, we had the, the constant financial support from our Ministry of Science. But, but we know that our budget is lower than other budgets, but it's, a, it's still a challenge for us. But for me, the most important thing between the, the collaboration between countries is to exchange knowledge. And uh, because it's like a multi multidisciplinary network, but grows in borders. Yeah, I think now it's the right time to ask you about COPTRAIN. So COPTRAIN yeah. is the educational program of COPUK delivered in partnership with Welcome Connecting Science. And we have been developing um, free genomics training and COVID-19 genomic surveillance training across the world for almost a year. Mm -hmm. You got involved with COPTRAIN from the very beginning, like when we were running our initial focus groups meetings to identify training needs and guide our mm -hmm. curriculum development. Mm -hmm. What made you become involved with COPTRAIN? Well, you say that uh, you uh, being one of the most important consortium around the world, and you proved to be successful in everything regarding genomics and bioinformatics. Uh, for me, the way you got involved training the rest of the world, opening the mind of many researchers across the world uh, is ex 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 exemplifier. For me, it's exemplifier. And I think that you got the idea that uh, improving the, mo the knowledge of the rest of the world, we will, go, we will uh, be able to cope this together. For me, this is a very important, need, and that is why I'm I'm pr I'm most proud of being part of this program. And as you say, uh, my first uh, contact with the COG training was exactly one year ago. The 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 focus group meeting was exactly one year one year ago, when you asked us uh, what we needed. Uh, at that moment, and clearly we told you that we needed a training in bioinformatics. And well, as, uh, after afterwards, you uh, offered me to participate as a, as a organiz organizer or coordination with you in a in a course in Latin America. And at that moment, I couldn't participate because I was focused on the país project coordination because it was the worst moment of the pandemic in our country. But after I then participated in the first uh, training course that was the power of genomics uh, to understand the COVID-19 pandemic. And when I participated to, uh, I, I participated as a panelist talking about the story of the PAIS project and uh, how it started and how it works. 
But I think that uh, for me, the, the, the most important thing of this uh, program is the idea that uh, improving the knowledge of the rest of the world, we will, we will be able to cope this together globally. For yes. me, this is very important. Exactly, we're all in this mm -hmm. together. And that's why we wanted to gather experts from across the world, but they were leading the pandemic uh, effort, mm -hmm. but they were busy doing that. So they yeah. made a great, a huge effort to work with us. So we're very grateful for your time. And mm -hmm. I know you're also working with a team that is mostly composed of women. Um, mm -hmm. How do you define your leadership style? Well, um, I've always uh, worked with uh, groups of uh, mostly uh, uh, compound of women. And uh, I think that the most important thing in these uh, teams, <laughs> women teams, is that we, we know how to work collaboratively. I think that the in a cooperation, in a cooperation uh, working collaboration, uh, we uh, support one each other. Uh, we, you know, a, a kind of sorority, what is called. Uh, I think that is the most important thing in, in these kind of groups um, so yeah, they, to work in collaboration. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons we established this network of women in COP to establish this network yeah. of women <laughs> across the world. <laughs> and, um, You've mentioned that you, your science, your father inspired you to become a scientist. Did you have, uh, other than your family, a particular role model during your university years or during your career that has uh, guided you and helped you to achieve what you are at the moment? Yeah. Well, when I finished my my career, I I I had I I I. I attended um, a, a molecular biology engineering course at the Buenos Aires University, where I met uh, uh, at Paola Barrero, that is was uh, that later on became a very good friend of mine. At that moment, she was uh, she was attending the course as well, and she was at, at that moment she was a, a molecular uh, virology epidemiologist uh, PhD student at the virology laboratory of the Ricardo Gutierrez Children Hall a hospital where later when later on I became a PhD student and she she told me all, all what she was doing at that moment and I felt in love with the topic and this to do because you know that my topic was genetics in virology, and she told me the story about epidemiology, surveillance of virology in a, in a public hospital that was very important, that was in, in, a, in, a, in a public, in a hospital setting. In, uh, and, and I felt in love with the topic, and I say, I want to do this. So, well, then uh, she was a partner of me and she was a PhD student more advanced than me and I was a PhD student as well. And also um, my mentor, Alicia Mischenko, uh, uh, is my model of, of, um, of uh, I don't know how to explain to, to, to um, a role model. Of, well, be, yeah. Role model, yes, as a persistent uh, person. For me, the perseverance is very important in this career, and for me, this is uh, she. She is a model of, of perseverance. So you mentioned perseverance. Have you faced challenges or any particular obstacle during your career that you, you needed this uh, perseverance, like willing to to continue going, or were you at some point like thinking of giving up because? Anything became too hard. Yes, as I told you, in particular during the pandemic, it, there were many, many challenges that we had because uh, during the worst moment of the pandemic, well, obviously, as I said before, the low budget we had only, we have all, uh, always in this, uh, in lower mid income countries is a challenge for us. It's for the first time, it's a challenge for the first point. And then um, during the, the pandemic, there were many problems with the customs, the bureaucratic procedures. Uh, sometimes we were very tired of that. I say, well, I want to leave everything. But well, I, I think that's why I say that with the perseverance, we overcame it. We overcame it because uh, sometimes here in, in these kind of countries, we have many problems with that top, with that uh, um, 
with that uh, points. And um, but on the other hand, I could say that uh, that are the challenges that are bureaucratic uh, grants and budget and customs and whatever. But on the other hand, uh, the human capital is the most important thing, and we had it. So uh, that uh, that makes me to go on be and to be perseverant to go on. So what? Yeah, and we're very mm -hmm. lucky that you continued and you're here. Yeah. <laughs> and we always ask this question. We did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, we, one of the reasons we run these Women in Cock events is to promote science careers in women and girls. And mm. What advice would you give to young women looking to follow in your footsteps and start a career in science? Well, first, uh, trust in yourselves. Believe in yourselves. Trust that you can reach your goals of your career. And I think that um, maybe there will be obstacles but with the perseverance, you will overcome them. For the, that is why a piece of advice is the perseverance. And most importantly, never let someone else make you believe because that because you are a woman, you won't be able to make it. That is not true because achievements are independent of gender. For me, you have to record in your mind that uh, that idea. And uh, another piece of advice is you should learn to work collaboratively in teams. It's very important because at the beginning of your career, maybe the individuality could be advantageous, but at the end of the road, the collaborative and multidisciplinary work in teams is uh, more, more enriching and it's a means of having more successful uh, results. So I think that is, I can say, that's what I can say. Yeah, it's a very good advice indeed. And you, we've talked about your personal life and your family support and your work. What do you do outside of work? So you mentioned that during the pandemic, you had to give up some hobbies because mm. there was no time for it. Like, but what, mm. or now if you have recovered and go back to these activities, what do you do outside of work? Well, I, 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 I always like to, to, to do uh, gymnast uh, activities, athletic activities. I, I, I like to do, um, to dance. <laughs> and I like to have uh, parties because I love to, I love parties. I love to dance in parties with my friends. And, but what another activity is I, I like the arts. I like doing th things with the, with arts. Um, I always work with, I don't know how to explain in, in English because uh, I, I, it's not like painting is um, to, 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 I, well, I don't know how to explain what that is. It, it's related to art. Uh, yeah. Sorry? Crafts, I think, like with your hands. Maybe. Yeah. Yes, yes, that is that is okay. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to go to the Q&A now because I've seen a couple of very interesting questions. Um, there's Sarah is commenting, thank you for the fantastic conversation today. And she mentions, managers can have a massive impact on employees and mentoring support can be important. Are there any mm -hmm. mentoring experiences that stand out for you? You've already mentioned your role models, but maybe of you can speak about your role as a mentor, mentoring other people. Yes, uh, being a leader or mentor is standing by my group. That is very important to know that we are not omnipotent and that is very important to work in teams and nothing happens if you are alone. And also to, to um, uh, show them, to, to, to showing them uh, confidence in the, in the group and motivating to reach their goals. And also that it's something important is that to know how and when to delegate. For me, it's very important. Exactly. I mean, we don't have time for everything, so we have to yeah. know which. And we have to know that we are not omnipotent. That is very important. Exactly. So there are more questions. Um, the next one is, what are you most excited about in science and discovery? So well, I think I, I, I think that I told you the story of my project and, and the story of my how I decided to study virology, genetic virology, and how I study. 
I, I, I like to stay in a public hospital. I don't, I, 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 in, when I decided to start my scientific career, I, I knew that I didn't want to stay at a, at a laboratory uh, without a contact with anybody. I, I, I like to work in a public hospital to, to exchange uh, knowledge with the, or, or, or questions or things with the, the, the doctors or, or, or to see the patients. For me, it's very important. And that is what inspires me to go on, to see that what I'm doing, uh, it's, uh, I, I can see what I'm doing. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and the impact that it has. And another question is, what does the next step look like for you? What are your ambitions and aspirations for the future? Well, I think that uh, I think that the most uh, in, uh, the most important thing is to 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 uh, change the way of the Paris project because the Paris project was made be, uh, with the aim of uh, surveillance of SARS-CoV-2, and as I told you, now we are trying to move to another because we have to take advantage of this network because this is a very multidisciplinary network and it works it worked very well and all the participants all the professionals work enthusiastically so i we have of this so we are trying to move different uh, viruses with a high impact in public health like for example uh, can you hear me well? Because I say that my internet connection is bad. Okay, perfect. And um, we are trying to move to other viruses with high impact in public health, like for example, respiratory syncytial virus. That is my topic, my first topic at the beginning of my career. Um, because, well, we are next to have a vaccine to to uh, against the, this virus. So it will be very important, the genomic surveillance of, of RSV. Also, we are trying to, to, to optimize protocols to sequence dengue viruses because it's a very important problem in our country. And I think in the future, because I'm a biologist, but we have many professionals in different, my, uh, in different areas alike. Oh, you muted yourself, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what I did. And uh, so, well, I, as I said before, I we are trying to first we are moving to different viruses, and then in the future, I think that because we have many different professionals specializing in bacteria or fungi, we are going to move to other uh, other microbiology fields. <laughs> so, well, that is my my I think my future. Yeah, well, at Comuque, we took a similar approach. We funded uh, four metagenomics projects, for example, to expand yeah. our research. And I have, yeah, very interesting. I have another question. So someone says, it was great to hear what you said, not letting people affect your belief in yourself because of your gender. What advice mm -hmm. can you give us about responding to those pe to those to these people? So if someone does no. say, like, yeah, you cannot be a scientist because yeah, you're never scientist. let someone never let someone makes you believe that you won't be able to do it. It's your it, it's difficult to say what to say to someone that is going it. No, it's to show them that you can do it. To be perseverance and reach your goals is to show them you have to you don't have to say anything. Exactly. You have to work and show that you can do it. Go on. Be perseverance. Uh, be perseverant. Sorry, and go and let's show them that you can do it and you you can reach your goals. And for, for me, that is the example. We have live feedback and someone is saying thank you. This is a great answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have one final question. Do you have yeah. any learnings from the pandemic or things you would have done differently? Well, yes, uh, to work with many, many people, because I've always been working in a team, in a very little team made up, made up of women, and I have to learn to work with many people across the country. So I had to, to, to leverage my, I don't know how to explain it, to leverage my way of, 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 uh, uh, of uh, talking with them and to, to try to everyone uh, get uh, 
well with my ideas and because I have to work with men or with many people with different professions. I've always worked with biologists, biologists, not with politicians because I had to talk with politicians because or with with reporters. Uh, well, so I think that um, that it was my one of my learns. And the other is that the pandemic. I I, I think that everybody knew or supposed in the past that the pandemic will would uh, change our our human nature <laughs> but i think that I, it, it won't <laughs> it didn't yeah we didn't. thought we thought it would make us human. better yeah sorry i'm missing you yeah go back please yes mm -hmm. no no the, the, that everybody it would be better and <laughs> We didn't. I think that I I I I I am better than than before, but uh, but I think that the human nature in that in, in general, <laughs> no. Thank you. I think this is uh, a right point to leave our conversation. And thank you for uh, to the audience for these very interesting questions. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you all for joining us. And please don't forget to register for our next Women in Cock event, which will be in conversation with Dr. Sam Burrell, the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Francis Crick uh -huh. Institute, which will take place wow. on Tuesday, 22nd of November at 12.15. And thank uh -huh. you all. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, Laia. It was a very pleasure to have this interview with you. And well, I, I think that I, I hope that my experience will inspire new women <laughs> in the future. So well, sure. thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.